call the order to regular meeting of the President and Board of Trustees of McChesney Park, Illinois for Tuesday, February 7, 2015. Please stand for the invocation led by Pastor Mom Concordia Lutheran Church and Pledge of Allegiance led by Trustee James Kidd. Lord God, Heavenly Father, each day our nation, our state, and our community face new challenges. Many of them we're able to handle with good rational thought and consideration, but some stretch our abilities. When we hear of things like this past weekend, 21 Christian men beheaded by the extremists called ISIS for their belief in Jesus, and today another 45 burned to death again by ISIS. It, it scares us as people of any community. And it isn't just terrorism, it's, it's all of the violence and hatred that we see in our own communities. Lord, we seek your mercy and peace for all families who are afflicted by violence. Guard us from indifference to the dangers around us, but at the same time protect us from unwarranted fear. Lead us to seek your wisdom and blessing and to demonstrate a love for one another. Bless those who sit before us this night charged with the responsibility of leading this community. Give them wisdom for this day and guidance for the days to come. Surround our police, fire, and emergency personnel with the shield of your protection. And bless us all as we live our lives as part of the McChesney Park community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Clerk, take a roll call, please. Here, Bolin. Here. Trustee Snodgrass. Here. Tammon. Here. Kidd. Here. Wilson. Here. Yo. Here. Beck. Here. Clerk is present. The attorney is present. Thank you, Lori. We have a quorum. Uh, first on the agenda is approval of minutes from February 2nd, 2015 board meeting. I entertain a motion to approve. So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or changes? I see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes have been approved. Next we have Treasurer's Report, Michelle Johansson. Thank you, Your Honor. The total of all funds this evening is $5,480,766.30. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I entertain a motion to accept the Treasurer's Report. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I hear none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Treasurer's report has been accepted. Next we have communications, village clerk Lori Mitchell. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, several things this evening. Uh, first of all, we want to wish happy birthday to our trustee, James Kidd. And second of all, I have a reminder that the uh, Loves Park Alliance Club Pancake Breakfast will be held on February 28th from 7 a.m. until noon. <coughs> and that's held in conjunction with the Parks Chamber of Commerce Business Expo, which is from 8 until noon, same day at Loves Park City Hall. And also this evening, we'd like to congratulate our village attorney, Tom Green. Uh, he has been featured in Leading Lawyers Magazine. Much of the recognition featured his role in the acquisition of property and the de development of Route 7173 corridor. The village has certainly blessed community by his service to the community and his expert legal advice. Thank you very much. And this evening, first of all, I'd like to introduce Ms. Lori Gumau who is Executive Director of Keep Northern Illinois Beautiful for her annual update to the village. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bolin and trustees for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak before you this evening. 
I uh, first wanted to mention that we asked for the village's support for our annual Christmas tree recycling program. And it went very well this year. Uh, we got a lot of the trees uh, chipped before the blizzard came, so now we kind of have to unbury it a little bit. It went very well. I have to mention that uh, one of our sites, not this one, but one of our sites, somebody wanted to participate, so they dropped off an artificial tree. So I guess when they say Christmas tree recycling, we have to clarify it's just for natural trees. So all the locations now have mulch available, and the mulch is available on a first-come, first-served basis. So we encourage your residents, if they are landscapers or or um, they like to do gardening at home. It's great for acid-loving plants like azaleas, blueberries, rhododendrons. It also smells really good. So if you put some in your car, you don't even need to buy one of those air fresheners. So that program, again, we work with you very closely every year. Thank you again for, for your support. I know that uh, the number of trees increased here at McChesney Park this last year, so I know that's due to the participation. Some of the other things that we do coming up next will be the Great American Cleanup. And we have uh, check-in locations will be again at Harlem. And we have 13, I think we have actually 19 locations confirmed this year. It's going to be the 25th of April. Last year we had nearly 1,400 volunteers coming out during three hours. And this was one of the events that Transform Rockford sent about 80 volunteers out to help our, our litter and debris that once the snow goes away we'll see that. It's also an economic development issue, the mere presence of litter in front of your home or business devalues your property values by 7 to 10 percent. So it's not only unsightly, it does have a negative effect on our, our economic development. So it's a huge program um, that we collaborate between the City of Rockford and Winnebago County and all the municipalities here in Winnebago County. So you'll be seeing some more information about that coming up the end of April. I also wanted to mention uh, we are, we're in the planning process for our medication drive, which we also do right here at McChesney. And that has become, we're considered a model program for the state of Illinois. And we have two other drop-off satellite locations, but this is the main location. And last year we served over 1,200 households because now pharmaceuticals cannot be filtered out of our drinking water system. And we want to make sure that we're giving right information so that we're keeping pharmaceuticals and over-the-counter medications out of the hands of children. And we're keeping it out of our drinking water system. So again, thank you for allowing us uh, to do that. And our spring metals and electronics drive, I could just go on about all the things that we do. Um, but I did leave you a flyer about uh, recycling. So if you do miss our metals electronics drive or our clothing drive, we have a new recycling center to add to the one in Roscoe. We now have one in South Rockford that you can bring a lot of your items to. So if you're, um, if you're cleaning out mom and dad's house and you have a lot of materials, or you have a vacuum or gutter or clothing or electronics, you can come to our recycling center, which is typically open on Saturdays and Tuesdays as long as the wind chill's not below zero. So we had to cancel today because it was too cold. <coughs> but again, we do so many things to help the residents of our community. I just wanted to thank you for your continued support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lori. And at this time, uh, County Board Chairman Scott Christensen uh, will speak to the board about the MRO development at the airport and the county and village participation. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you, and trustees. Appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this evening, and I apologize for not being able to make your last meeting. I had a committee meeting going at the county that I wasn't able to leave, so... Hopefully Mike Dunn did fairly well in my stead. He knows the data, of course, much better than I. <clears throat> but let me just say a couple things. First of all, don't get out here nearly enough. Uh, I go back to the days when you first incorporated out here. So I'm getting to be the dinosaur around when it relates to politics in our county. But let me say that there was a lot of concern in this. I remember that. But you've done just an outstanding job. I mean, I brag about McChesney Park all the time and how you're contracting things, and that kind of, both our relationship between policing and building departments, um, the private sector, you know, keeping employees to a minimal that exposure, you've just done an outstanding job, as far as I'm concerned. We've had a great partnership. I think of, uh, well, Perryville Road is a primary, bringing that up from, uh, actually I've been around since we started going north, but, uh, that last section we did jointly between the 173 and Swanson Road. And I think that's worked out just, just tremendous and provided for future growth there as well. You know, we put, the county put a million dollars into Woodward. Uh, there was a gap there right at the end and 
I had conversations going after one of my board meetings. And I think that's going to have a huge impact here as well, in particular in your housing market. When that starts to come back, I think this is going to be the first area along that 173 corridor. And as you know, Mayor, and I'm sure trustees as well, we've been pushing that whole program regionally. At 173, I've written many letters for favoring that, etc. You've got the makings of a Randall Road right here. And uh, the Meyer store now being the next staple to move in, I think. It's a real, a real credit to you, your staff, the legal staff, Attorney Green, and the whole organization. Practice Velocity, we partnered on that and put money in there jointly. Uh, and that's, I think, just a huge success as well as far as creating good jobs. So what we're asking here is just to uh, continue that partnership. We uh, collect about $19,000 from the host fees, the tipping fees of the landfill from your contract, your municipal, municipal contract. And we're, uh, our intent is to rebate that back to you, those dollars. And when this opportunity, the MRO came forward, we wanted to uh, ask you to match that, about 20000 a year, uh, over the life of this bond, this 20-year bond. Uh, why is that important to all of us? Well, we work so well regionally. And I would bring up the reclaiming first as being a model. Uh, your mayor sits on that board along with me and the other CEOs. And we would suggest something similar here, where not only would you uh, be a full participant, you would have a seat on that board. And it would be a weighted thing similar to the Reclaiming First board. But the important thing is you're getting the correspondence and communications just as we all are. You know, that was a really a model, how we pull that all together. So we want to make that uh, clear as well in the uh, governance uh, and so forth. Now, the airport authority is quite a bit of, quite far along in that whole process. But uh, we feel we can be of assistance there, and certainly that we as funders should have an opportunity for input. So that's, uh, that's where that's headed. We have confidence we can get all this done. Um, a final thing I wanted to mention, you know I think about the job. 500 million, I, I was there when the CEO said he'd be disappointed if there weren't 1,000. They're talking like the third hangar, things like this already. So it has a huge impact on us being able to send our, our students, some of them being retrained. Some of them are well in their 30s, maybe a different career move. But uh, to have an opportunity to teach a vocational type, airline mechanics. It was a huge mistake when we got out of the vocational training business. That was just so crazy, I can't believe we ever did it. You know, we have a good share, in fact, a lion's share of our folks don't go into college. You know, so we need job skills, we need training, we need career readiness. And that's what this provides. I'm, I'm thrilled that Rock Valley is now in a position to where they're retooling the uh, Stenstrom Center, that's their plan, so that there's again modern day CNC machines, update of what's going on now, welding, I mean, you name it, there's many needs for that whole vocational training. So this is an extension of that, and the beauty is walk 60 feet after they get done with RBC, and there's a job there, you know, what averages airplane mechanics average 57K a year. So this is really, really good stuff for us, and it's going to help the whole region. I intend on visiting every agency within Rock Valley's district, which includes Boone and the city of Belvedere. And I think it's important that we all contribute and show that kind of uh, regional outstanding leadership and the, the fact that we know we're all going to benefit from this. You know, it's maybe a bit cliche, but rising tide lifts all boats. And in this case, this is very, very true. In addition to that, Rock Valley has got, not got the form line yet, but they told me that you'd be offered probably a couple of scholarships, Harlem uh, students, uh, that could be uh, put into the uh, training at RBC to become mechanics, and that's, uh, that's a two-year deal, I think it's around 12000 type value, so that's an added benefit uh, for those that are helping us fund it. So I guess beyond that, I think the... Uh, uh, unless you have any questions, I guess, Mayor, I would say that pretty much concludes my remarks. I'm, I'm hopefully you'll uh, continue partnering with us if we've done so much in the past. And thank you for uh, the opportunity. Are there any questions for the chair? Trustee Hill. Chairman Christensen. Um, yes, sir. I'm a, I'm a big supporter of, of partnerships. I'm a big supporter of, of job creation. I think both of those things are very viable. My question is this. Has 
anyone besides Rockford, which is I'm still finalizing theirs, and Loves Park, which is given uh, the mayor the authority. Anybody else in the region at this point contributed towards this uh, in terms of Cherry Valley, in terms of any of the other surrounding communities? Actually, uh, and the reason is probably my fault, uh, Mr. Yo, I've only been to Loves Park and Hare. Okay. And I've got meetings scheduled for Grand and Winnebago, and we're continuing to call and line those up. So uh, even after, we, we intend, uh, our board is intent on voting probably the last meeting of this month, which will be a week from Thursday. So we'll get as far as we can, but I continue doing this. I want to continue afterwards. You're right, everybody should contribute something. And I know those those small communities aren't going to be able to do a lot, but you know, let's, let's, I'm more interested in participation than I am numbers. Full partnerships. Full partnerships, absolutely. <clears throat> Trustee Wilson. Chairman Christensen, you mentioned the two scholarships potentially to the Harlem School District from Rock Valley College. Yeah. What if the village were to just put the $20,000 you want us to put in along with the host fees that you'll already get, and we put that into our own scholarships for our Harlem High School? Well, isn't it almost the same effect, Mr. Wilson? I mean, the only thing is you're getting credit for supporting the, the MRO here regionally, but in a, you're getting that same thing, so you could probably view it that way. But it's, I think it's important that there's a contribution to the facility. And there's other help too, by the way. You know, there's, there's these Pell money, there's other monies available for students. Um, so beyond that point, there would be, you know, hopefully two, uh, and would be four, two with Love's Park, two with McKesson Park. And uh, again, I think that's, uh, that's, that's the more appropriate way to go, I think, because they can negotiate whatever, and maybe, maybe that's something that could be assigned to this board. You can make that selection of who those students are. Uh, Trustee Schnodgrass. Thank you. Chairman, um, can you clarify for me, the contribution isn't actually to the MRO, it's to Winnebago County, right? Because you've already made the commitment and we're just helping to ease that burden? Is yes, that correct? Yes, we've got, um, uh, the way the funding works is we're eight million, the city of Rockford's five, the airport authority is three. And the thing is, the eight million that we're talking about here, when you roll up the interest, you're over 11 million. That's the part we said, we need some help. It's a big ask for us. Yes, our host fee is, uh, it'll take probably one fifth, one sixth, somewhere in that range for the next 20 years. <coughs> now we feel good about the other things we've done and we're gonna watch that, but you know, it's a significant investment. So we said, let's, let's talk about partners. We talked about, you know, uh, giving back the host fees, the municipal portion anyway. So if we could do a match, I mean, it's a win-win it's a thing, I think. So it's the same equivalent of you putting 40,000 in. Trustee Beck. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, is, are these scholarships going to be based on income eligibility or just basically um, the, the, the grade eligibility? You know, what I would, what I would say, Mr. Beck, um, is Rock Valley really ought to answer that more than my, my, my take on it is you would, you know, you would ex exhaust whatever possibilities are out there. Clearly, like Pell will do that, plus it'll actually give us students if we're very low income. They'll have to give them some additional money beyond, beyond the tuition. So that ought to be looked at first, but in the case of no, then I'd say, yeah, let's see they step up and fund it. And I think they can even do this starting their senior year. So they do one senior year credit there, and then the next year they could actually uh, be equivalent to first year of college, be out and be on a job. Thank you. I hope that answers something. Trustee Tammon? If we make the 20 year commitment and AA, AAR pulls out after their 10 years or their two years of mandatory time, what happens to our commitment of that 20 years? Well, that's, we're kind of, you know, because bonds are being sold, we're, we're, we're on the hook clearly. Uh, um, They've not, all I can tell you is the history of the company, and you're certainly welcome to, you know, Google whatever AAR is just an outstanding company. Six locations, they have not ever shut one down. They're growing by leaps and bounds. They're saying they project a 20% increase in that business each year for the next five. So uh, to answer your question, I said, well, you know, obviously their bonds of 20 years are going to have to be uh, fulfilled. So um, I guess that may be a little bit of the risk you've identified. Uh, Trustee, and I, I appreciate that, but uh, we just think the rewards are much higher. Thank you. 
Trustee Kidd. Chairman Christensen, Christensen, thank you for coming today. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Um, the, the question I have is I like the student idea concept of uh, Rock Valley College, but we also have dislocated workers in the community. Uh, Trustee Wilson sent us a nice link last week, and I appreciate that. Um, I would like to see uh, the Chesney Park dislocated worker also receive some type of Illinois employment security uh, slots, um, maybe two, if we're going to send two college or two high school students, maybe we should send two dislocated workers also from the Chesney Park to the scholarship fund. And that would be, of course, up to the attorney and uh, to the Savage uh, Court if that would be. So I'm just giving you a suggestion. I thank you for your time. I think that's a very good suggestion. Trustee Wilson. Chairman Christensen, I'm having a difficult time explaining to my neighbors how, and, and I do explain the part that we're part of the airport authority, I completely understand that, and I think that they do too, but when they see other communities that are so much more closer to what's going to happen down there, they find it hard to believe that people from this area are going to really be driving down there to work and it's going to then completely impact this community. So if you could walk with me across the road to my community and talk with them, how do you explain to them that this is something that's going to truly work for McChesney Park and not just Cherry Valley, Byron, <coughs> Stone Valley, New Milford, Winnebago? Yeah, well, I think that the, the essence here is, the first of all, the quantity and the quality of the jobs. And uh, providing the training, that's a, that's a must anyway, as I indicated before. When we got out of the vocational training, that was a huge mistake, in my opinion. Um, but I, I would suggest that this is really close. We well, have people in Roscoe, the engineers are going to be at Woodward and Sunstrand, etc. And excuse me, it's uh, Utah's now, I guess. But nevertheless, uh, I think it's a great opportunity for McChesney Park. Just at his love park, just as it is probably for Belvedere, probably uh, Freeport, do they have people have some interest? You know, it's really quite a profession there. If you think of aerospace, and Woodward folks have told us that they uh, they like to have this experience first. So I think there's a good share of these folks that will be turned into engineers. Woodward is very anxious to hire these folks as well. So that's right in your backyard. You know, I could foresee a lot of those people <coughs> ultimately end up at Woodward living in McChesney Park. Thank you. I did it one time, by the way, right up the hill. <laughs> Uh, Chairman, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I had a conversation <clears throat> with Representative John Cabello uh, concerning this, and he pointed out something to me that um, uh, we, you, you said you, you address Loves Park and McChesney Park, and that's the only two you address. Uh, we have uh, commissioners on the airport board, and he pointed out uh, that we, if we ever get a casino in this area, that we, meaning Loves Park and McChesney Park, would also uh, gain revenue from that that others would not gain. And uh, of course, there's no guarantees. They're asking for 8% from McChesney Park. Uh, you know, that's a number that's threw out there. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out that uh, we have some advantages here by having a commissioner and Ray Wetzel, our commissioner, sitting right there. Uh, that you know we have revenues uh, to come that others may not have. I, I do appreciate that, Mayor. Do you recall we've had meetings where we've talked jointly, all of us agreeing to making sure everybody is in on the uh, if were there to be a casino. And I hesitate saying anything anymore. You know, I knock on wood right away. There's been so many. I first negotiated uh, some kind of split with Gene Quinn when he was chairman in 92, I think it was, so that's how long this issue's been around. But I certainly agree. Uh, I think that, as a matter of fact, if were that to come to fruition, it might well worth, be worth discussing that, the, you know, off the top of any of those revenues could be this payment, this million dollar year commitment. Uh, that might be, you know, certainly you're going to find anything better regionally, I think. So, so those, those options are are very good, and I'm going to certainly keep fighting for a split that involves Majestic Park and the rest of this county. I, I just want to caution you, Mayor, to that. You remember two words here, reclaiming first, and we brought up before that if we were to get some of the gaming money, it might go to or that project. So now here's another project, and we're only out for a couple of years on reclaiming first. If we do get the casino monies, is there enough there for everything that we're thinking it might go to? 
food for thought. If we get anywhere between five and eight percent, you got plenty of money. Uh, I would like to point out one more thing uh, personally, um, and I mentioned it to one of our trustees that uh, had a meeting with me. Uh, if you remember back when the Boeing company was looking at uh, the geographical area here, had the AAR been here present at that time, we probably could have got down into this area. And the point is that if we don't change our region to attract the big companies, we're going to continue to attract the job shop type uh, of manufacturing. And we need to start attracting the, the, the top ones, like the Woodward's and so forth. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. Well, I think that's an excellent point. And again, we, uh, there seems to be, there's certainly some revenues. Uh, that's your business, but there's revenues. I know in the gaming, I know that was Love's Park contention. Not that you're necessarily doing what they are, but. Uh, that it would come out of their uh, video from gaming dollars. So I, you know, that's, I think you've got people very qualified to make those decisions. So, but anyway, point well taken. I mean, this is going to bring freight carriers, and I'm sure Mike would have pointed that out, and Ray, you know about it as well as anyone. I don't know if you want to say anything at this point, but I can tell you, he's done a great job for you on that board for all of us. And uh, the fact that this then would lead to uh, freight carriers, from the Far East, etc. That is a big, big deal. That just continues this whole footprint. And now we've got not only uh, some passenger action that's been going on and growing steadily, but now the, the freight side of this, which is, frankly, that's where the money's made. <coughs> so that's the next step. Is there any more questions for the chairman? Thank you, Chairman Chris. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you all. Stay warm. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Lord. Uh, next, we have warrants. Uh, Trustee Snodgrass. Thank you, Your Honor. I present warrants in the amount of $289,647.65. These were reviewed, and we recommend approval. Um, yeah. We looked at them at the Admission, Administration and Finance Committee, and I move further passage. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussions? I see none. Would the clerk take roll call? Trustee Snodgrass? Aye. Tamman? Aye. Kidd? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Yo? Aye. Beck? Aye. Six ayes and no nays. Thank you, Lord. The warrants are approved. Next, we have administrative reports. I'd just like to read a note uh, that was sent to me uh, from the GPS Faith Community, uh, Pastor Rob James. It says, Greetings, Mayor Bowen and Trustees. We are grateful for your wonderful partnership and your financial support. $500 for the GPS Faith Community and Grace Lutheran Church Mobile uh, Food Pantry. Beginning in 2007, we have now hosted over 75 pantries and given away over 750,000 pounds of food in our community. We invite you to join us at Grace on the third Monday from 4.30 the 7 p.m. Thank you, Pastor Rob James. Yep. Next we have Attorney Green. I'll do a report tonight, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Green. Next we have Community Development Coordinator, Coordinator Lucia Madlock. Thank you, Your Honor. I wanted to report on one of the projects the Community Development Department has been working on. Uh, we've been working on updating the Village of McChesney Park website to provide convenience and municipal information for citizens, as well as valuable community details for site selectors and businesses looking to locate in McChesney Park. Some of the things that have been recently added are available buildings and sites. Uh, there's a map that would show those locations, as well as brochures that are produced um, by clicking on those uh, sites. Uh, the dem demographic information, transportation um, for shipping, et cetera. And then um, one of the other uh, members of the department has been working on um, adding community uh, section, highlighting the uh, life in Chesney Park, uh, created a community news page to highlight local happenings and events and achievements, and also a page um, for each trustee uh, listing the um, districts 
their districts and also their contact information. Um, this is all meant to uh, provide easier accessibility for everybody in the community and I hope you'll take some time to take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Next we have Harlem High School student liaison Justin Porter. Thank you, Your Honor. The activities for this week include a varsity boys basketball game at Boylan this Friday at 7 p.m. And next week, there's a home varsity boys basketball game uh, on the 27th, also at 7 p.m. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Next, we have village engineer Chris Dawkins. Uh, no report this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Next, we have public safety supervisor Sergeant Doug Bushman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for the time period of January 30th to February 12th, there were 918 total calls for service in the village. There were 307 reports taken and 297 arrests. Uh, that's the police report, Your Honor. Thank you, Sergeant Bushman. Next, we have committee and trustee reports. Do we have any reports tonight? Trustee Wilson. Your Honor, the Public Improvements and Safety Committee met this evening, and there are four resolutions that will go to March 2nd for a meeting with positive recommendation. Thank you, Trustee Wilson. Trustee Kidd. I would like to thank the VFW, Glenn Gorley, and the American Legion, um, Sergeant Matthew Brick Ashman, Brown Star recipient. Um, he did win his lawsuit against the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department for being terminated on military orders in June of 2008. And I would like to thank you folks for giving that family food, um, payment for heating and electricity, and all the kind of things that the VFW and the Marine Corps Legion have done for the American Legion there. So thank you. Is there any more reports? Trustee Schneidergrass. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Administration and Finance Committee met earlier this evening and will be moving forward one ordinance and one resolution to the March 2nd board meeting with positive approval, pos positive recommendation. Thank you, Trustee Schneidergrass. Are there any more reports? I assume. <coughs> The next item for consideration is the consent agenda. Are there any items that a trustee would like removed from the consent agenda to be considered separately? I see none. The consent agenda is accepted as presented. I will entertain a motion to approve all items under the consent agenda. So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. Could I have staff report, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Tonight's consent agenda consists of item A, ordinance 16-15, the disposal of certain village property deemed to be no longer needed by the village, and the list has been provided of that equipment. Item B is resolution 4-R-15, provides for the vacation of certain right-of-way on Norson Avenue. Item C is resolution 6-R-15, and that is a uh, contract to enter into um, our dental and life insurance for the next year. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Tim. Are there any trustee discussions? I see none. We'll first take roll call. Trustee Tannen. Aye. Kidd. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Yo. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Snodgrass. Aye. Mayor Bolin. Aye. Seven ayes and no nays. Thank you, Lori. All items under consent agenda is approved. Next, we have public comment. Do we have anyone who wishes to make public comment? I see none. Uh, next, we have closed session for 5 ILCS 120-2C1 evaluation of personnel. I will entertain a motion to go into closed session. Pursue it to 5 ILCS 1202-C1 evaluation of personnel. So I have a motion and a second. Will the clerk take roll call? Trustee Wilson. Aye. Yo. Aye. Beck. Aye. Snodgrass. Aye. Tannen. Aye. Kit. Aye. Six eyes and no nays. Thank you, Lori. We are now in closed session.